2013 got off to an impressive start with the New Year's Eve gathering which happened in Dublin. The streets were alive with an amazing street carnival, some fantastic projections on Trinity College and fireworks to boot. She's in the middle of two fallen lovers When what could turn you to a pillar of the sun When a dark cloud is all you have to hold on Pick up the phone so I can call your phone GAA has a very special place in a lot of Irish people's hearts and just because they move abroad it doesn't mean that they love the sport any less. This was proved when over 50 people travelled from western coast Australia to play against their hometown of Bunclody. Fantastic to be part of the gatherings um, events this year. It originated in a pub in Bondi last June or July. You see yourself with the family like have everyone home it's, it's just you can't be it, like, you know. 2013 been the year of the gathering. For us, we see it as a real hick start for our club and our county here in Pontodi. Two years ago, I think, I think 10 from our team went in the two years. So, we missed them. The mas and the dads were all delighted to see them all home. and It's great to have them back. Shane Furlong, we got, got in contact with us and asked us, could they play a match when they came home here? And uh, we said, wonderful, how many of you will be coming? And they said, well, we'll have uh, 15, perhaps, you know, enough lads that will come and play a hurling match. And we said, oh, that's great. Perhaps we'd make it part of the gathering. Could you get a few more people coming? So you're looking at roughly oh, about 150 that have been in Australia over the last year, two years, three years, that are now going to be here today just to support us and play. Great, great to get back for a couple of weeks and see family and friends I haven't seen in so long. And yeah, it's good to be back. Ah, sure, but those you're going to win. I mean, it uh, goes without saying. Oh, but I was shadow of Central Coast, even though I'll be run out of Cloudy for saying it. Like, I think we have it in the bag. Gee, <sighs> I couldn't tell you. Uh, I bought a few bob on the coast. Gatherers like this is great because I haven't seen most of my friends now to play with the coast. I played with that team when I was over there, and I haven't seen them for maybe 10 months. And it's great to be part of it. And now from slitters to all that glitters, Tara Carty recently caught up with Steven Spielberg, Daniel Day-Lewis and a host of other celebrities at the Lincoln Premier Gathering in Dublin. We're here on the red carpet for the European Premier of Lincoln where Daniel Day-Lewis is hosting his very own gathering in aid of the Wicklow Hospice Foundation. We're going to be speaking to him and also his Lincoln director Steven Spielberg and co-star Sally Field. Sometimes films have um, something to offer uh, beyond pure entertainment. Um, this may be one of those films, but whatever it is, whatever people take from it, to actually just give it a chance like tonight, to uh, give it some legs and help it to raise some money for something like the hospice is, uh, 
That's a great thing. He really believes in this, and once he explained it to me, I really believed in it too. And also, I'm very close to Ireland. I, I, I don't have my roots here the way Daniel does. But I made Private Ryan here, which was a film that's very close to my heart and Tom Hanks's heart. And that was my real introduction into the culture, into the cooperation we got from the people, the, lo the local government, uh, the Ministry of Culture, and the Irish Army. And, and we, it was such a wonderful experience making Ryan here. We started coming back just for ourselves. My wife and I and my kids, we've been back many times since. I love Dublin, I love Ireland, um, and Daniel yesterday when we landed here was like a child. He was jumping around, he was so excited, and we were all just absolutely thrilled to be here. We were so excited for him that he was like so, so excited to be here with us from, to his home and yeah. delivering this film to his home, and it's perfect. You know, I, I, since I moved over here uh, 20 years ago, uh, the, the, this, this place, has been a sanctuary for me and it always will be it was when I was a child and it always will be so um, to uh, to feel that, that one has contributed to the culture in any way that's a nice feeling um, I'm always happy to be here Tickets for Daniel Day-Lewis's gala dinner fundraiser were very much in demand and it was one of the many events that make up the Gathering Ireland 2013 which is a year-long celebration of all things Irish it's about the people of Ireland inviting anyone who feels a connection to the country to come and visit in 2013. And there are a lot of big supporters for the gathering. The thing about the diaspora is it's a, it's a terrific idea, particularly at the end of this ghastly recession we've just been going through. And there's, there's, you know, the seeds of hope are, are growing, as I say, the green shoots of recovery. And I think it's wonderful to show Ireland off to the world as a place to come back to and uh, not show, just show your Irishness, but it's a friendly place for anybody to come and visit. And I'm, I'm really totally behind the gathering. Um, you know, I think it's a really good initiative. Um, it's a way of getting people together, people who obviously live abroad. And um, we've, between us all, we've an awful lot of friends who live all over the world. And I think it's um, yeah, just a great way of getting people together, connecting people um, in real life rather than online. To celebrate something that is essential to Ireland and to the Irish experience and to our culture is really important. And that's what I like about the gathering. It actually celebrates the enduring things that are here. I, I think it's a fantastic idea, um, you know, if you go down to grassroots and it's something that the economy can do with. But look, listen, we all love a get-together and uh, the Burn Clan, we're all doing it down in Wicklow, so I would absolutely encourage everyone else to be doing it. For more news on the European premiere of Lincoln, log on to thegatheringireland.com. Late last year, Liz Clonan won a competition on The Gathering's Facebook page. She won flights for a loved one from anywhere in the world to come home to Ireland. She chose to fly home her brother Jared. found ourselves just like so busy and didn't even get a chance to think about it. She's not expecting this at all. Like, she'd be completely shocked. And we only uh, spoke to her a couple of days ago, did I tell you? And she yeah, was crying. Yeah, yeah. yesterday. She crying. Yesterday she was crying. She's yeah. like, I can't believe it's another Christmas without you. Yeah. I said I was going to Skype her on New Year's Eve and she started crying. Yeah. But I'm going to be here. I'm going to be here. I've so. convinced her to do a New Year's Day dinner already. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Very excited. I haven't seen them in nearly two years. It's great to see my sister and my brother again. I'm really looking forward to see my mum and dad and getting Danielle to meet my parents for the yeah. first time and stuff like that since we got married so yeah we're really looking forward to it. Haven't met them yet so yeah. it'll be very exciting. Yeah we're very excited yeah can't wait. It's gonna be a nice surprise. This great opportunity came along so we can't really pass up spending a bit of time with the family. Merry Christmas! Ah! 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 Christmas wishes do come true. Hey, yeah. <laughs> Me wife wants to meet you. Man. <laughs> oh, Sandra. 
Can we that horror? We were gonna send you. We were gonna send you something. We said we'd send you the real thing instead. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. I won a competition to play. Liz won a competition to play him and Danielle over. I don't know. The first thing that came to my mind was like. Um, how am I going to keep a secret? And then how am I going to actually get my mum out to make it a surprise? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, when I jumped out from behind the tree there, I was like, I jumped out, I was like, hey, Merry Christmas. And it took like about 10 seconds for the reaction to come through. I was like, is she going to recognise yeah, me know, or what? Yeah. I was like, and she just started screaming. <laughs> 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 it took me a few minutes. I know, yeah, I've seen it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas. That warm feeling back of me told me now. The lovely warm, that warm thing is back there now. <laughs> this, this is just the ideal gathering for anybody, anywhere. Just being brought home for Christmas, just reuniting with family and friends, it's just, it's just amazing. Mm -hmm. We recently headed out to County Sligo to join the Yates Winter School Gathering. Here people celebrated the magic and mysticism of one of Ireland's best loved writers, W.B. Yeats. We're here to promote the work and an interest in the work of the Yates family. Uh, Two of the main events we have is in January, as part of the gathering, we have a winter school. Then in August, we have a two-week international summer school in which we have experts and lecturers from all over the world lecturing to an international audience. When I first came to live in Sligo, uh, I was very interested in extending people's knowledge and people's understanding of the poet William Butler Yeats. Uh, so in 2012, we launched Yeats Day to coincide with Yeats's birthday on the 13th of June. And of course, in this year of the gathering, uh, we're looking to have an event in Sligo, which would be a mass recital of um, the Lake Isle of Inishfree, which of course is the poem of the diaspora and of yearning to come home and to come back to Ireland, which of course coincides very well with the gathering. I love the mysticism and the way Yeats is able to bring us from practical reality and we sort of rise up to a more uh, luminous and glorious place. What I love about Ireland is a feeling that I get, the immediacy of uh, connection, a feeling of home wherever I am. And I particularly love the storytelling, the music, the ground under my feet. I just love all of it. Yeats, I think, is um he, he is such an enormous figure in Irish poetry. Firstly, you cannot but recognise this, the magisterial quality of the work. And I think we're just intensely grateful to him um, for having, uh, for, for the wealth of the heritage that, that, that we've, uh, we were born into. When I was, was about 19 years old, I first came to Ireland and I picked up the collected poetry of W.B. Yeats and I almost fell in love with it immediately because I found a magical atmosphere. I found a connection to spirituality, a connection to nature, uh, an atmosphere of uncertainty that I absolutely loved and that uh, has sustained me uh, even until now. And I was so blown away by the words of Yeats that I got really, really interested in and wanted to find out more about him. So I came across the Yeats Society in Sligo and I have been coming to the Yeats Summer School, Yeats Winter School, Yeats Day, everything to do with Yeats in Sligo ever since. It can truly be described as a gathering because here we have all the greatest uh, experts on the work of William Butler Yeats coming to speak to an international student group. So talk chocolate on there is a gathering and the people come. It's smaller me. Tradfest recently took place in Dublin. As part of the gathering, it was even bigger and better than ever before. I'm Sharon Shannon and um, 
I play Irish traditional music. Traditional music in Ireland is thriving, uh, very much so at the moment. People love it. No matter what country you go to, people just kind of, uh, they, they react well to Irish music. This is my first time to Ireland, so I definitely am excited to kind of just experience the culture and the music. And actually, Austra mentioned um, the Trad Fest to me, and I was like, we have to come check it out. It's great to be involved in it as well. I'm really, really, really honoured to be asked to, to be part of the Tradfest at St. Patrick's Cathedral. I have two gigs on Friday night and Saturday night, and uh, it's going to be really magic. I suppose the main uh, mark of, of Irish tradition is the music in all of the English-speaking world, but also within Europe and Germany particularly. I decided to come over here because last year I liked it so very much and uh, so I had to come back. Irish music uh, is the identifying factor of, of Ireland, I might say, apart from the Pint of Guinness, which has a harp on it. Music is, it is an international language, it's a universal language. Uh, music speaks to everybody to attract people and bring people in. You really feel like you can be immersed in the culture and get to know the people and, and everything that Ireland has to offer. The gathering is a great opportunity for people to come home from abroad and enjoy Irish music again. Everything about it is wonderful. We recently caught up with some IT high flyers when Silicon Valley came to court. This is the first technology business gathering of The Gathering 2013 and we're delighted that we're part of The Gathering. We've brought over some fantastic technology leaders from all around the world to attend this gathering today. The Irish Technology Leadership Group is uh, an organisation which was uh, assembled to support Irish uh, technology companies to help them grow globally, particularly into the United States using our network within particularly Silicon Valley but also throughout Europe and Asia. Our delegation is led by Craig Barrett, uh, former chairman of Intel and chairman of the Irish Technology Leadership Group. We also have uh, leaders and investors from Silicon Valley but also from the east coast of the United States and from Asia. My firm is called Strategic Marketing Innovations and we call it SMI um, and we're in the Washington DC area we're considering opening up an office in Dublin, sort of a satellite office to expand our reach into the European Union. Based in the US, so Ireland for business offers a lot of options for the American companies, and there's 500 and something here, but you heard them mentioned here at the conference. They come here for a number of reasons. One, if you're in the, once you're in Ireland, you're in the EU. Irish speak English. The I Ireland has a pretty good infrastructure. Ireland has a great educational system, so right there, you've addressed a number of concerns if you're a business. In addition, Ireland has a fairly favorable tax treatment for uh, innovation, research and innovation, as well as general corporate tax. So that's why you see a lot of firms set up here as opposed to other parts of the EU. And the fact is, we have good cultural ties between the US and Ireland, and that has a value. Uh, it lowers the risk if you're a company and you're making a corporate decision, should I invest money to open an operation there or do business based out of Ireland? It really is a lower risk, a higher return. Well, I think the highlights for, for, for people uh, here in Ireland is, is actually the opportunity for 50 companies to present to people who are so well connected internationally. I'm Michael McLaughlin, I'm CEO of Connect Ireland. Uh, Connect Ireland is a new programme uh, which was launched by the Taoiseach in March of 2012. We're part of the Action Plan for Jobs. And the objective is to try to uh, expand the reach and cap marketing capacity of IDA. Our core audience is the, the diaspora. Uh, the gathering is encouraging the diaspora to consider coming home uh, and enjoy Ireland and you know, come back to, to your roots, I suppose. Uh, we're encouraging the diaspora to consider who they know and make connections for us into those companies that they know. But ultimately, it's about bringing business, it's about bringing opportunities back into Ireland. 
Yeah, to me, the gathering for 2013 is, going, is a fantastic idea, and I, I'm, uh, everybody's eagerly looking forward to it. And I mean, whether it's uh, from a tourism point of view, from your local GA club to your rugby club, I mean, there's a lot of activities going on. And you can come have a great time. So those are all pretty important reasons to come to Ireland. Gatherings are about bringing people together. And nothing showed this more than when Maureen Smullen recently turned 80. I haven't seen you. Relatives from all over the world flew in to celebrate her special day. My name is Maureen Smullen and I'm 80 today. Myself and my sister said we were trying to figure out what to get her for her AC and uh, the only thing she wanted was for us all to be together. And I thought it's a good time to, to call it the gathering, make it official, get it going and it spiralled and started as a family dinner and it just, it just went on and on and on and this is what we've got now and it's been absolutely brilliant. A party like this, everybody gets to see each other at the same time. A hotel like this, we, no one's responsible for the other person, so it makes it fun. Today, oh, it's really wonderful. I, I didn't realise that so many relations. They've come from everywhere. It's really fun because we can dance and play. It's great fun hanging out with all my cousins. And this is my favourite cousin. It's good for a country to be proud of where they're from. And everybody in our family is very, very proud to be Irish and very proud to come home and celebrate here. Family get together, you, know, you don't see them very often, so uh, it's nice to get together. Okay, there's, there's Skype, there's internet, there's, but it's not the same as actually getting together and having a real Irish, you know, get together. It really isn't. As I say, it's, it's so prepared, the best I ever had. And now for the gathering events, guys. St. Patrick's Day is one of the highlights of the year. As one of the largest and best known parades, the People's Parade Dublin welcomes guests from countries across the globe to march through the capital's streets. The International Band Parade will host several new bands traveling from North America, Russia, and the four corners of Ireland. Joining Limerick's finest, these bands will showcase their talents with adrenaline pumping music for all the family to enjoy. More good news for music fans as the Birmingham Band, along with several other bands from London, will participate in the Wexford St. Patrick's Day Festival. The Birmingham Band will perform on three days over the St. Patrick's weekend at different venues in Wexford Town. The Crafts Council of Ireland will celebrate Kilkenny City as a destination for overseas visitors in 2013 through a series of workshops. The Crafts Council will include in its international programme three craft and design exhibitions, as well as a host of arty types from Norway, Finland and Sweden. Horsepower is very much the theme of this year's newly extended five-day Racing Home for Easter Festival in Mallow, with racing, food, fashion and fun taking place throughout the festival. If culture is what you're after, why not check out the Royal Ballet Gathering in Derry? Amazing dancers from all over the world will appear in selected highlights from the Royal Ballet's extensive repertoire. The National Poultry Races is certainly a unique gathering. Poultry fans are invited to watch chickens, roosters, ducks and geese race to the finish line on the village green in the picturesque town of Carlingford in County Louth on Easter Monday. As you can see, there's some amazing gatherings happening in the coming weeks, so be part of it. Check out thegatheringireland.com for further details about all of the events you've seen today and lots more events to come.